Welcome to another edition of Around with Randall, your weekly podcast on making your nonprofit more effective for your community. And here is your host, the CEO and founder of Hallett Philanthropy, Randall Hallett. Very, very best season greetings to you, and thanks for joining me here on Around with Randall. Today in the holiday spirit, I thought we'd take a look at the value of philanthropy at this time of the year. And certainly Christmas has been uh, a hallmark in the season for many religious beliefs for the end of the year. And we think about fundraising and how people make gifts, this idea of charity. I want to just spend a few minutes, and this will be a short version, and maybe not with a lot of tactical, but maybe some things to think about on how we're more alike in this world than we are different. And we spend probably too much time thinking about those differences rather than celebrating the greatness that is humankind. And I do this through the eyes of religion, which most people probably wouldn't put their nose into as much. And I don't think this will be controversial in any way, shape, or form. But how the idea of philanthropy, love of mankind, helping others, the holiday season, certainly for Christians, it's the birth of Christ, but it's the idea of giving, charity, giving to others, presence. So let's take a look at this through the eyes of religion for a moment. And we'll start with the Jewish faith, the idea of sadaka, which in Hebrew literally means justice. And the idea that Part of giving is a moral obligation that all Jewish people should follow. It's a part of their teaching, which is so interesting because we see that around the world. We'll see the same theme in so many different religious areas. And then at the end, we'll even talk about those that may be agnostic or atheist and the value there. Giving even goes beyond monetary. It's about taking care of others. Rabbis will speak of the, of the and please correct me or forgive me if I get it a little bit, but the Gilmayut Hasadim. And the idea that it literally means loving kindness, that we have an obligation to go beyond the monetary, but into the relational. How do we help others as a part of the religious practice that one has in the Jewish faith, very much a tenant of Judaism. If we look at Christianity, Christianity, we have many parts of the Christian faith who still value the idea of giving one-tenth of their income to the church in obligation and the ability to help others, and the church would be part of that process to give to the poor to help those who need assistance. Jesus talked about giving and helping others many times, but we think about the story of the young ruler who he said to give away all of his wealth to receive the praise of God. And then we have the story or the parable of the Good Samaritan where someone's hurt on the side of the road and important people go by and it's the Samaritan who is seen below the local population in terms of importance who stops and offers aid and takes that person to an inn for their care. Again, the monetary and the personal, how do we help others? Philanthropy, love of mankind. For Muslims, it's very much a part of their religious beliefs. Zakat, which is this idea of purity, is taught and it advocates giving 2.5% of one's assets to others to better the world. It's part of their religious process. Sadaka, another religious term in the Muslim faith, 
which really means about giving additional gifts. And in some ways, it's related to this idea that, that we talked about in, a moment ago in the Jewish faith about justice and focusing on those that are most in need, the poor, those that, are, that have health challenges. And Muhammad talks about this specifically. The simple act of smiling, even if you have no money, is considered a gift to another. So there's three major faiths that all have this idea of philanthropy. If we turn to Buddhism and the Buddhist practice, generosity is the first of the six perfections, a virtuous quality where it leads to spiritual awakening that by offering both material and oneself, you grow. And again, a concentration on those that are most in need. I want to read the quote um, that Buddhists often quote from Buddha in one of the early scriptures. What is the accomplishment in generosity? A noble disciple dwells at home with a heart free from stain of stinginess, open-handed, pure-handed, delighted in relinquishment, one devoted to charity, one who delights in sharing and giving. This is called the accomplishment in generosity. Kind of cool if you don't study Buddhism or you're not particularly a Buddhist. Sikhs have very much a sense of philanthropy, helping others, greatness of helping someone else. When they talk about sharing the fruits of their earnings with the sections or the parts of society that are the most in need. The Sikh scripture can be quoted as, only they are on the true path who eat what they earn through earnest work and help support the disenfranchised. Even if you're an atheist, agnostic, not quite sure, we know that philanthropy, the idea of helping others, expressing gratitude, sharing yourself with others, has health medical consequences that are positive for your body. It actually, when done and it's received, makes people happier. Romantic relationships are fuller. People are more optimistic. Blood pressure decreases. Sleep improves. Overall health increases, gets better. When we get into like thinking about the blood, we have lower cholesterol when we express gratitude and have it received. Lower blood pressure. It actually strengthens the immune system. It improves pain tolerance. And one study from 2009 says that those that express gratitude and help others and have it received actually have and do live longer lives. This holiday season, no matter what religion you practice or no religion at all, whether you buy Christmas presents, Hanukkah presents, or whatever for someone else, or not. I hope everyone can embrace the idea that helping someone else makes us more alike, no matter what religious beliefs you have, or none at all, than what actually separates us. And that it has positive consequences to our disposition in life, to our ability to work with others and live with others. And finally, to our health in a positive way. All critical aspects of what the basic premise of what philanthropy is all about. Love of mankind, love of one another, willingness to help other people to make the world a better place. 
And if there's one holiday message that I hope I can share with you, and maybe you can share with others, is that the world needs more people who are philanthropic, who want to help others, because there are plenty of people out there who need a little bit of help. On behalf of everyone at Hallett Philanthropy, on behalf of my family, and most importantly from me, on behalf of myself, I wish you the best of the holiday season. And I hope that you can see the world that might be if we all were just a little bit more philanthropic with each other. And that is a great way to conclude 2021. Some people make things happen. Some people watch things happen. Then there are those who wondered what happened. Be someone who makes someone ha- make something happen for someone who's wondering what happened. We'll see you next time right here on Around with Randall. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. And don't forget, you make it a great day. Mm-hmm.